Hello. Today, we're going to be working on this 2010 Prius. I thought Toyotas didn't break. That's why I bought this Prius. I haven't had a single issue with this car in almost 50,000 miles. And this issue is a pretty big issue. When you think about reliability, you think about a Toyota. And I stand on that. Toyotas are absolutely reliable. Really, anyone you get, they're going to work. But that doesn't come without their share of issues. This 2010 Prius has some known issues. The first one I heard about was a failing head gasket, which this does not have at the moment. Head gasket is good. What I do have is a failing brake booster and ABS module. And that's what we're going to be fixing today. Bam. Yes, it is crazy. This is like $560, and then this is another $560. I'll also need Toyota's tech stream to bleed all of this. So that's it. Let's go ahead and get started. So the first step was to take off this drain cover, whatever you want to call that. And that exposes all of this under here. So I'm going to go ahead and disassemble all this and get me some more room. I just want to show this real quick. This harness, these clips right here are in there and you just have to squeeze the outsides and then push them through. Easy peasy. So with all those, these bolts removed, they are 10 millimeter. This thing kind of just pulls right out. We got so much more room. That's what I'm talking about. Should probably try to drain this, but best I got is this. Want to lose? There we go. There we go. Completely remove this canister. Okay. Okay. Take the rest of these hoses off to get them out of the way. go ahead and just disconnect from the inside and then we'll work on all the hoses out here. So here are the four nuts we're after. They are 12 millimeter. Then I'm gonna have to come up to this guy and take this out. Wanted to try to get a better shot of this, but it's just those four bolts and this pin and then you can slide it out from the other side and you guys get the idea. So while we're here, this is what the pin looks like on the inside. And this is the clip. So basically what you gotta do is push this side over and then it slips out like that. That's how it works. And don't lose it. So once all of these are off, the last thing kind of holding it on is this nut right here. And it's just a bracket holding on this red line so I'm going to get that out, and then this whole thing should just lift right out. I feel like I need to take this guy out. So I went and grabbed, got this bracket out. You just got to take the two nuts off there. All right, there it is. Let's start with taking these connectors off. Okay. One, all right. I gotta take this bolt off. Then there's another one. Oof. Back here on this one. Let's get our 10 millimeter. Get that thing loose. Okay, so that's loose. That bolt. Okay, buddy. That's one. loose. I have no faith in catching it. Oof. My fingertips. I got it. So I ended up taking the red hose off, 10 millimeter, and then there's a 10 millimeter bolt on that side that you just take off. You're gonna have to really work at it to slide it to the left. 
and then even further to the left to come out. Recycle it. This piece here is fitting on one side. The other two bolts slide in to this hole and this hole. And there are these little rubber pieces. That's what it goes in, slides in, and then it tightens down with that 10 millimeter. And I've got to find the other one that fell somewhere. But looking at it outside the car, we have this piece that essentially, if we imagine this as the, the barb going out, we have to put it in, slide it over, so it's secure on that side while these are going in the other two holes on the right side. I'm gonna try a different approach where I put these guys in first. Got it in. It's gonna go in this way. They fell out. Okay. All right, we're in. This front one is is actually not bad. So there's there's plenty of room. That's right. I got it. I got it. Thank you, Jesus. All right, now I need my ten millimeter. Perfect. That's it. How this went on in this mess. All right, the red hose is in. I just got to tighten both of those bolts, uh, or not bolts, but one bolt, this one, and then the actual line to get it on. And then we can go ahead, put our gasket on, our new one. We've got the new seal, and it's it's kind of flexible and rubbery and the other one was completely stiff and not rubbery and this is gonna be so I, I needed to line the fork up on the back side with the brake pedal because it was like doing this so I'll show it, you what I mean just gonna make sure that's all squared up there we go there it is so it's gonna go just like this. Uh, the black, solid red, then this black one with the, the white mark, then this greenish gray one. So that I forgot to grab off of the old one was this bracket, and this is for the red hose. All right, everything's done. Last step is to plug this in. Perfect. Put our little clip in. I'm going to put these hoses in, put everything back together here, and then get on the tech stream. So let's do it. I think it goes like this. But I'm not sure. Get this thing rocking and rolling. Just like that, it's all back together. Now I gotta fill that with brake fluid and then take all the tires off. This is clear. Priming itself, I guess. I'm just gonna have to keep an eye on that. So I've got my computer hooked up, and yeah, it's a mess in there. I'm cleaning that up after this. Opening up. All right, so as you see, all those lights are on, and that's what usually stays on. I don't really know how to use TechStream, but I'm going to go ahead and start this process. Utility. I'm going to go to air bleeding. ABS has been replaced. 
Vehicle is stopped. Parking brake is applied. Let's put that on. The hardest part for me was getting my computer and the tech stream and the car to connect. It would go through the process and then all of a sudden it would say lost communication, which I've looked it up and I'm pretty sure it's just the cable. But I was able to change some of the settings on the computer and give it a little more CPU. And I don't know if that's what helped, but I got through the process and the car is working great, braking perfectly and everything's all good. That's gonna be it for the Prius. This was a pretty fun job. I will say that the most complicated part was hooking up the computer to the car Something was up with my cable or my computer, something. I would go through the whole process, and then when it, when it would say to bleed the stroke simulator, it would immediately disconnect. I was troubleshooting that for a few hours, but I eventually figured it out and got it working. As for putting the actual parts, disassembling them, putting them in, this part did not take that long. It was pretty simple, pretty straightforward. I got that done in just a few hours. So if you're going to try this yourself, things I would recommend would be to get a scan tool that you know is going to work, or if you already have TechStream. But if you already have TechStream, you're probably not watching a video on how to change out these parts. If you want to get TechStream how I had it, you can go ahead and watch the video that I watched to get it. I've I'll put it in the description. If you're going to try this on your Prius, leave a comment. I read pretty much all of them. If you guys need any help, let me know. Thanks for watching. If you like this type of video, subscribe for more. And if you're interested, I'm working on a Volkswagen bug engine. You can check out those videos on my channel.